Welcome into Duval Daily presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thank you so much for tuning in here on Tuesday, May 21st. Christian Kirk. I want to talk about him today. A guy who just gets overlooked way too often, does not get talked about enough for the player that he is, for the impact he has made in Jacksonville and throughout his young NFL career. Uh, so we're going to talk about him today and and dive into kind of expectations for 2024, uh, you know, why he maybe has been overlooked, you know, how he's been criticized for the contract he got from the Jaguars, uh, the injury situation last year, all that stuff. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com slash shop. Pick up some new Duval gear like the hat I'm wearing right now. You can become a channel member here on YouTube. Get access to some cool perks, including discounts over at the shop. So diving into Christian Kirk. Like I said, just gets overlooked way too often, nationally and locally, in my opinion. Uh, when folks do talk about him, they bring up the fact that he got overpaid by the Jaguars by getting $18 million per year a couple years ago. The fact that he's not a true outside number one wide receiver. Um, now, did the Jaguars overspend when they signed Christian Kirk uh, prior to the 2022 season from a market standpoint? Like, yeah, I think that they probably dropped a bag on him that no one else was going to compete with, you know, at $18 million per year. I think it's fair to say that. It's fair to acknowledge that. Uh, I actually, you know, back before I was doing the videos constantly full time, um, I, I was writing a lot and I did a list of like the five players I think the Jaguars should target at wide receiver. Christian Kirk was, I think, number two on that list. So like he presented a lot of value in terms of what he brings to the field prior to getting to Jacksonville. I thought he was a guy they would probably pay if they did decide to go after him like in the 13 to 14 million dollar range, not 18 million per year. But on the reverse side of that coin, has he earned every single penny that he's made in Jacksonville? Like yes, 1000% and then some, realistically. Um so Christian Kirk in 2023, he obviously had to leave the game against the Bengals, would not return for the remainder of the season, had to get surgery had multiple injury issues going on before that moment, before the, the play where he went down and couldn't get up. The Jaguars were eight and three in 2023 and they were 14 and four over their last 18 games dating back to 2022. Like Christian Kirk was a major catalyst for that led the team in receiving yards, touchdowns and catches in 2022 he was on pace to do the same thing again in 2023. He's been great for the Jaguars. He elevates the entire offense. And I can guarantee you that the Jaguars would have made the playoffs if Christian Kirk didn't get, go down with that injury. If Christian Kirk remained healthy and was able to play throughout the final stretch of 2023, the Jaguars would have made the playoffs. And a lot of people would be talking differently about them right now. But he did get injured. The season fell apart. Trevor Lawrence was injured. The whole left side of the offensive line was in shambles injury-wise. So many guys went down throughout the roster. And so people kind of look at this team a little differently. And rightfully so. Like The way they were built, they didn't have the depth to withstand what happened last year. And I think they've done a good job bringing in more depth in most spots. Like I've told you all, I still think there's a couple depth areas that they could improve specifically edge uh, but the future is bright in Jacksonville and Kirk is a big reason why uh, the future and the present right he he is not a dominant X receiver like no that's not his role and that's kind of what a lot of people point at is why he shouldn't get 18 million per year or whatever but that does not diminish what he does for this offense what he does for any offense that he would be in he's a dominant slot receiver like two-way goes, nickel corners can't keep up with that. They can't defend that consistently, not against Christian Kirk. Um, deep overs, he's excellent in that in that regard. Slot fades, you've seen Trevor Lawrence connect with Christian Kirk on so many slot fades over the last couple of years. A lot of them have been big touchdowns. Uh, finding the soft spot against zone coverage, 
he's a tough cover. He's a tough football player. I think he's really underrated. He's a reliable weapon for Trevor Lawrence. It's not just some of the big plays he makes, but it's the chain-moving plays that he makes as well. You know, he's caught 68% of his targets in Jacksonville. I think the presence of Brian Thomas Jr. and Gabe Davis is going to help him out as well. Um, like those two guys can get vertical. Gabe Davis, I think, averages over 16 yards per catch for his career, has a high average depth of target. Brian Thomas Jr., high average depth of target guy. These two guys playing outside with Christian Kirk playing inside is going to open up some space for him you know, over the middle of the field, in my opinion. Uh, but, you know, what kind of brought this on for me was seeing him at OTAs yesterday. He doesn't look like he skipped a beat. Like, and this dude was playing with an injured groin last year. Got the abdomen ripped off the bone. Required surgery. But he's back like he never left. He doesn't look like anything happened. And in fact, he looks, you know, stronger than ever. I know everyone says that at this time of year. It's the time to say that, right? But it's true. Uh, he's back. Trevor Lawrence is back fully healthy. The whole offensive line is fully healthy. Uh, you know, Anton Harrison's still um, not back to 100% after the surgery, but a guy that, you know, Anton Harrison played the entire year throughout that, so I'm not worried about that. But Christian Kirk, Trevor Lawrence, as I mentioned, Brian Thomas Jr., Evan Ingram, Gabe Davis, Travis Etienne, this is going to be a fun offense now, and Doug Peterson is going to be more hands-on. And, you know, Christian Kirk, he he's online a little bit. He wanted to remind people of the player he is. Like, he wants to do that this year. Like, he knows there's people out there that kind of downplay what he brings to the table. But this guy's only 27, and he already has almost 5,000 receiving yards in his career. He has had a very good career. He is a very good football player, high-impact guy, character guy. He's currently under contract through 2025 with the Jags. I'd extend him next offseason. He'll be 28 years old, prime of his career, great chemistry with Trevor Lawrence, awesome slot player. Um, he's the type of guy you want to pay. And look, you now have Brian Thomas Jr. under contract for the next five years, cost-controlled. You can pay Christian Kirk to be your number one veteran receiver. You can do it. Uh, I would even extend him now if he wanted to for like three or four years, 20 to 22 million a year. He might want to go out there and have like a dominant season though and um, get an even bigger payday. But the salary cap's only rising. Like 20 to 22 million, that's going to look like a bargain uh, eventually. Right now, I mean, looking at his contract with 18 million per year. Uh, it's not even anywhere close to where it was just a couple years ago. So I told y'all earlier to be thankful for Trevor Lawrence. You should absolutely be thankful for Christian Kirk too. This is a good football player, good community guy, hard worker, and somebody that Trevor Lawrence has great chemistry with. So I'm excited to see what those two can cook up in 2024. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out genjag.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear. Y'all have a good one.